I've always been a critic of conventional economic theory and I've always been on the lookout for a model that was a decent, complete alternative. And the first one I believe was that was Minsky's financial instability hypothesis, which I became aware of in the late 80s. So my PhD was on trying to turn that from a verbal model into a mathematical one, which Minsky had never done. And I succeeded in my PhD in doing that. But what I had to do was I, I had implicit money in the sense that I had debt in the model. And that's one thing that conventional models do not have. They do not include the role of debt in a capitalist economy. Bizarre but true. So I built one that did, but it was implicitly monetary. And I wanted to make it an explicitly monetary system. So I finally, about three or four years ago, I managed to build a mathematical model that had a strictly monetary model of capitalism. And now what I've done is also find a way to make that accessible and usable for people who don't actually know uh, that they're doing mathematical modelling. And that's what this particular software package is about. It, it took me 20 years to be an overnight success in that I started doing the mathematical modelling uh, back in 89 and I probably knocked it off in 2009. But then to turn that from something which you had to know differential equations and be able to use mathematical software to do to a, uh, a, a graphical user interface which you can fill in the dots and have yourself simulating a monetary economy in a hey presto way. Uh, that in, in terms of inspiration took about uh, five minutes. In terms of perspiration uh, took about uh, five months for the first working prototype which I can show you. And we're now happily going to believe about two or three years building a really serious full-blown graphical user interface system uh, which will be able to go right from the level of teaching undergraduate students how a monetary economy works right up to the stage of simulating the full global economy as a monetary system. And when I simulate it, uh, what you get is a system where the money pours out of the vault, goes into the firm, the firm then goes and hires workers who produce output. This is all happening in the background. The output workers then consume. Uh, the workers also get interest on their deposit coming from the bank. The bank charges interest on the firm, so the loan interest has to be paid, it pays deposit interest back here, and the banks also consume. And over time, all the money that was in the vault ends up going into across the loans. So in this particular case, I think I've got the loans being slightly repaid. So you'll see ultimately all those things ultimately stabilise. Okay, what it does is it simply models uh, the financial flows in capitalism using double entry bookkeeping. So we're all used to the idea of saying you know, money goes from one account to another account, and if you take out a loan, the bank gives you the money and also records on a ledger effectively that you owe them that money. Simply by saying, what, what are those flows likely to be? You know, money, if you're going to hire workers, money has to go from uh, a capitalist's account to a worker's account. So you say minus A here plus A over there, and then say, what's a reasonable value for A? So if we're looking at, say, servicing debt, well, obviously the servicing level is the interest rate on loans times how much loans you've got at the moment. So you put that in another part of the model. Then you give a reasonable value for the level of uh, interest rates and then you uh, put in an initial value for the loans, simulate and you're away. And all the hard work of doing the equations that actually turn that description of flows from one point to another into a simulation system is done in the background.